guys as well, they're worried about their gains. Like, there is so much you can do with the resistance band, and I'm about aesthetics. Like, there's so many things if your goal is just aesthetics, which most people it is. Uh, for, you know, I can give you a fucking tin of beans. If you put you on the right angle, give them the right grip, that tin of beans feels like a 40 kg dumbbell yeah. come rep 12. Accentuated isometrics is something that I'm really kind of playing around with now. Because if we don't yeah. adapt, do you know what I mean? We're in trouble. Yeah, exactly. It's, a, it's adapt or die, isn't it? I think that number one, knowledge is power. What's going on guys? Today is a very first episode, which I'm super, super pumped about, as you can tell, of a podcast uh, that I'm starting, the Danny Mulligan podcast. On this podcast, I'm gonna have coaches on there, all different types of coaches, to learn, educate, uh, particularly a lot more of us are gonna be digesting info online because you can't meet your personal trainer at the gym. So I'm bringing the personal trainers to you, basically. So I wanna have coaches come onto the show, tell you how they're managing during lockdown, how that you should manage your diet during lockdown, things you can do, equipment you should be really buying, where to, put your, where to invest your money, things that you can do to stay fit during this lockdown. So. Because this thing, although we're not in full lockdown, I imagine it's not very long. And even if not so, I mean, we shouldn't really be leaving the house. So um, use of home workouts are really our only option. Today on the show, I've got a good friend of mine. He's coming on the show to talk to you about how he's adapted, where he's took his business, what things he's done in order to get over this pandemic. The original plan was to call this podcast, obviously, together um, here. But unfortunately... With the way that things have panned out, we can't, so we're going to do a Skype call. His name is Lance Creswell, he's a personal trainer in Nottingham. He has quite a niche in this space, and I really want to speak to him about that. Well, I hope he agrees with me, and I'm looking forward to getting this thing started. So we're going to have a great discussion, so get your headphones on and enjoy the podcast. Right, we are live. So what's going on? Oh yeah, he's done the blurred background, look at you, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I was jealous. So me yeah. and Lance friends for a while um i wanted him to come on the show obviously because uh, we have a good uh, relationship we speak really well to each other and i think that i really want to get his opinion across of how you guys can stay fit during all this so without further ado lance um what do you do tell us good a bit afternoon. about yourself um so i'm a female only personal trainer um specializing in fat loss um i've been training people solely under the brand lcpt for about two maybe three years now um before that i was uh i was an intern and assistant coach at edwards performance uh which is now well kind of branched off into thrive health management and edwards edwards performance um i've kind of been in fitness pretty much all my life coming from a uh, semi-professional basketball players background uh, and you know training between four and six hours a day taking that really seriously with nutrition and health and training and all that um, so and even I mean before that my mum and dad are like you know um, really really high kind of profile athletes in their in their chosen field so my dad was a cross-country runner when oh, he was um, yeah when he was younger my dad was a cross-country runner he was like he was number one in Britain for, I mean, I don't know. I wasn't alive then, so yeah, I've not yeah. asked many questions about it, but he was a close friend. You've got some endurance in your blood then. <laughs> I, I didn't see you some endurance. Yeah. No, 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 no. You wouldn't think it now. The, the way I stay away from the treadmills, really, you wouldn't, <laughs> you wouldn't think it now. But yeah, no, yeah, my dad was a cross country runner, and my mum, uh, she was on the Olympic team for Taekwondo. So, between the two, I, mean, I think her dad was a boxer for Jamaica. Uh, so, do you know what I, mean? I kind of, you know, you sports has always yeah. been, yeah, it's always been in my family. Like, whatever whatever I was going to do, it was always going to be active. So. so, so when you put down the basketball, if you like, you felt like you needed to be in that realm still? Yeah, well, I mean, to be fair, like, I never, I never, I, a, a lot of guys that have, like, played professional, semi-professional sport, there's always like a moment that they can recall to like, yo, this is where I hung up my hat. And it was for this reason. And I swore I'd never go back to it or whatever. I, I, mine was more like, I don't, like quite boring. Like I just took like, I think it was six months out just to focus on my body, you know, rehabbing that and making sure that I was kind of fit to get through a whole season without being injured. You know what I mean? Yeah, sure. um, I took like six months out and about four months in, I thought, I've never been happier. Like, I'm so happy right now. What, it's I, a lot less stressful? 
Yeah, yeah, just I, I just I think you know you pick up the basketball and you love it and you're happy and you're a kid and you're playing, you work and it's and it's great fun and you enjoy you know the journey of improving every day and getting better and failing and picking yourself back up and but then at a certain point in time I, don't, I just don't think there's a lot of like self reflection that goes on with athletes, um, or I mean anybody really, but particularly yeah. athletes. So at what point did I fall out of love with it? I don't know. But I just know that when I did take that six months out, I thought, you know what? And at that time, you got to remember, I was a dad then. So I thought, right, you know okay. what? Yeah. I'm I'm getting more time with my son. Um, I'm I'm not in physical pain every single morning waking up, you know, having to like warm my knees up before I get out of bed. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, like it's yeah. ridiculous. You know what I mean? So like I've I had time to see my family. I had time to work on projects that I was interested in not just things that like I had to do for my coach or for the manager or for um, whatever, you know, for the kids I was coaching or whatever. Yeah. It was like things that I was doing for me. So I think that for me, like I just stopped to focus on myself. I know that's like a really kind of, you know, it's so cliche, isn't it? Like, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. No, like, it, is, it is. Yeah, it's the, it's well, the go-to thing. I'm working <laughs> on myself. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know when people take like a gap year from uni. Yeah. Like, I'm just gonna work on me. I'm gonna go traveling. I'm gonna work you're on just, me. Just a bum, bro. You're just a bum. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A bit lighter, bro. Yeah. I know, I know. But yeah, so I've always came from like sports, athletics, some kind of coaching element, and tied into that, I've always coached. Like always from the literally from the day I picked up a basketball, I was probably a better coach than I was a player, which is crazy to say. But I just kind of. I loved teaching. I just always loved teaching. I, lo- I always loved help. Maybe not teaching. Maybe that's not, not the right word, but kind of helping people learn from the mistakes that I've made. And See, well, that's yeah. the biggest thing that I take away from personal training is helping people. Like, yeah. like um, that one, especially and like they say, the, with Corona kicking around, this is why the game's changing a little bit. But um, the one thing that like you, I take most energy coming in a one-to-one session is that like like just reward you get from helping somebody and coaching them and teaching them and making them learn just the little tricks and yeah you know what I mean fine tuning technique and so yeah so how have you how have you adapted your business to suit corona then because obviously we um, think that a lot of people want to hear about you know corona um yeah, how you're adapting your business what you've done yeah. yeah it's a hot topic at the moment and what 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 is it you're doing to just kind of support your clients through this um so I mean, the first thing that I'd say is we've got no idea as as to how yeah, the yeah. this goes, as to, you know, what's going on tomorrow, next week, in a month's time. But this They've is the given- upsetting thing. It's like you can't guard yourself against it. Where, where, where my head's at yeah. is like, I, I'm, I'm hoping, I feel like you might be in the same boat. When this first started kicking off, I was kind of like, you know, they'll close big gyms. I'll be all right. I run from a small operation. You know what I mean? I don't, you know what I mean? And then, then like... Then a few clients were starting to get worried, you know, not showing up for sessions. And then it was like, oh, God, this thing's really unfolding. And I kept, I was I was clawing on to one-to-one. I was clawing on to one-to-one for ages and ages. Yeah. And, like, the more and more people were just, like, cancelling on me or saying, oh, Dan, you know, money's a bit tight. We're, we're going to have to cut PT or whatever. And I was just like, well, like in, in my head, I was just like, we're going to have to change this thing. Like, I'm going to have to adapt. Because if we don't yeah. adapt, you know what I mean? We're in trouble. Yeah, exactly. It's a, it's adapt or die, isn't it? Yeah, um, yeah. I think think yeah, like 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 you were saying, it's just day to day. I think that's the first the first thing that um that kind of hit me was just how day to day it was, how changing overnight, my, man. Yeah, literally, like you know, me and my clients were in the gym what four weeks ago now, and I remember you know we we're having conversations about it, and it's just like you know a two three minute conversation yeah, in, in between some rest time, yeah, yeah. and it's just like oh, somebody's done this, or in out in China, or in, out in Italy, they've done this and they've done that. And it's like, and, you know, nobody was 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 really dying at that point, or it was very, very few people, so it wasn't seen as, seen as something that was crazily serious. Overnight, you know, 10 people have died in Italy. That's around the corner from Britain. Yeah. Now yeah. people are starting to think, now people are starting to question it. Um. So, you know, as, as, as a coach, like, you know, personally it's scary when you've got you know people in your family like el- elderly people so or this people is where my head's at is like that, that's where my head's at is like um and that's the one reason i've take when i so clients were still keen on meeting me one-to-one I, for yeah. some of my clients i pulled the gun on them rather than the way around yeah i said you know i'm not like keen because like if, if you've got it or i've got it you know what i mean you're gonna pass it on i, I 
I just think we should take the advice that's given. Um, yeah. So yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, I took I took full ownership in that. Yeah, 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 for sure. I say so. Uh, the the announcement for total lockdown was on Monday. Um, was on Monday night. Sorry. And so for anyone, Mon- sorry for anyone watching this, that's a week. That's a week on from where we are now. We're filming a week later than that lockdown. Yeah. Well, so yeah. It's not so the actual we- official lockdown, but it's. He hasn't got the he hasn't got the, the balls to go official lockdown. <laughs> no, you know no. I mean? It's close it's, enough anyway. Yeah, it's like you know most shops and stuff have closed, and he's kind of told us to stay indoors unless we absolutely have to. Now all of a sudden everybody's got a dog and wants to go on walks and everything, which is. I know you've never seen I, so many fit people. I've never, I've never seen so many fit people, bro. It's yeah, ridiculous. I know, yeah. <laughs> um, no, it got announced on Monday night, and Monday lunchtime, Monday, I think it was Monday lunchtime, uh, mid morning, I had messaged all my clients and said, Listen, girls, I'm sorry to kind of pull the rug out beneath your feet, but we're not doing any sessions until further notice. Like, we're going to take a full week out. We're going to focus on like building some kind of contingency plan. Think of this as active rest. It doesn't mean a break from nutrition. It doesn't mean a break from, you know, how many steps you should be tracking per day. It just means that we're not going to be at the gym. So again, my advice to you, I can't, you know, I can't make them do, do anything, but my advice to them is to keep active, is to keep following the government's advice and just wait for further instruction from me. Um, so, so flash forward to a week now, uh, a, week, a week later, and I've now got my clients all along, like at the very at the very basic level, following a five day home workout routine with like little to no mm-hmm. equipment. Um, I've also updated all of their information on the app that I use to track their nutrition, uh, which is Chronometer. I don't know if you know somebody might be interested in that or like you yeah, might yeah. want to have a look. But it's, it's really good Chronometer. I use it to track everybody's nutrition. So, um, so is it? Is it a similar setup to my fitness pal? Because all I have with my clients is that they add me on my fitness pal, then I can go through their diaries individually. Is it similar? So, like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's 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 all kind of you know, um, it's two sides of the same coin, isn't it? It's pretty much the same setup. You're just tracking what the person eats, and a very at the very basic level, it, it's it's a level of accountability. I think like sometimes whether you check or I check clients diaries or not every single day or every other day or every week they know that we have access to that and it has like a a level of account yeah yeah yeah. that's 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 where my head's at it it's like the best thing is like when you're scrolling it and they've just put something in (laughs) yeah i'm like like, you bastard like are you gonna put that in i'm like oh man yeah no no Uh, i'll see it as well yeah but you know what to be fair like I'd rather them put it in and tell, like, if it's like a slice of chocolate cake or whatever, yeah, yeah. <laughs> put it in so I can see. And you know what I mean? Because that, because if not, the alternative is that they put in, you know, they've had, you know, whatever for breakfast, eating a ton of fruit and veg, you know, hitting the macros every single day. And then at the end of the week, I'm like, but you've put on four pounds. How? But yeah, then it, yeah, they, they've yeah. forgotten to tell me about the slice of cheesecake before breakfast in the morning, the yeah, slice of pounds, like, you yeah. know, whatever. So and the big fat soya latte, there, you know what I mean? Yeah, I don't get it, like, like 600 calories in a drink. Yeah. But, um, but no, so so I use chronometer to check the my, my client's nutrition, um, which chronometer I find is like really an answer to all of the little nitty gritty things that used to annoy me about my fitness pal, because my fitness pal was user submitted data. So you know, it's like Wikipedia, basically. If I say that, you know, this coffee, it's an Americano, it's just a black coffee, nothing else in it, just water and coffee, it's got 300 calories in because I just think that it's got it in. If I put that into my fitness pal and then you, Danny, who doesn't yeah, know me from yeah, I agree with that, yeah. black coffee, you might scroll down and see one that says, you know, the one that I put in that says 300 mm-hmm. calories and it's, you know, got a ton of this in it or whatever. And you're like, oh yeah, I'll use that one because it hits my macros. But it's not actually accurate. So chronometer, it, its users can't submit data aside from recipes. So let's say, That's for example, cool. if you put in a recipe of something in and name it Danny Mulligan's, whatever. Yeah, Danny Mulligan's, whatever. It doesn't come up on anybody's feed. If they, like, let's say Danny's lasagna, right? right. Somebody else t- types in lasagna. Danny's lasagna doesn't come up. The only time it comes up is when you send it to a friend, a client. Or if you actually type in lasagna yourself, and then it will come up. But for but for regular people, if they put in lasagna, like that's there's pretty only, cool. I might yeah, that 
you know what I mean? And yet, I mean, you know, it, it, it's, it's not cheap for coaches, but you incorporate the cost of that into the, in, in, yeah, do you know what I mean? Like, I, I think, I can't remember how much it's worked out to be, but I think it's worked out to be each client pays £24 for the year, and then that's it, and then they're logged on to my chronometer forever. You know what I mean? And then I can track the nutrition. I set the macros. It's even got things like fasting in there. So if they, you want to set a fast for somebody every day or like different between training days and non-training days, like it's really, if you have the time as a coach to do it, which, you know, we all do now, yeah, um, yeah, sure. you can definitely, like you can I think, definitely get I think all out. coaches have the time anyway. I believe like, even when I've been the busiest of clients, the busiest of PT, I believe that I've always had the time. So if you're not managing your client's nutrition, what are you doing? So, yeah. um, right. right. So, so what, just, I want to keep on the Corona a little bit. Um, so how would you just, as a base rule, say that, so I think I know where you stand a little bit that um, you think people should invest. I saw something you put out. People yeah. should invest in a coach. Um, but it, it, if it, excluding that, say that it's somebody that doesn't, is not willing to invest, you know, this is just for the average person or whatever, and they want to keep fit. What do you think some take home messages they could do? Uh, so, in all honesty, I think that number one, knowledge is power. And if they have, like, so, so I guess basically, you know, the question that you're asking me is, you know, somebody really wants to keep fit, really wants to get the best out of their health and nutrition. I mean, they might be in the same. They might be, they might have lost their job from the Corona. So that's another thing. Yeah, they might yeah, 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 yeah. Coach. They might, money might be real tight. Um, so then, so they, I mean, there might be situations where, like, you know, this is the, it's their only option, really, relatively. Yeah. Uh, well, in that sense, if 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 it's literally, you know, they don't have financially, they've not got any backing to be able to invest into anything. Uh, in in that sense um but they might have a ton of time on their hands or whatever knowledge is still power i think do whatever you can to find out as much information that is gonna help you in the long run first of all nobody knows how long this corona thing is gonna last do you know what i mean china's been in lockdown for god knows how long they've been told to self-isolate for god knows how long you know italy is wherever they are the uk we don't we still don't know where we're at because we've still not gone into full lockdown so god knows how long this thing is going to go on for um and even if we come out of lockdown who's to say that the gym's open anyway the gyms are like a really the gyms are a huge risky environment yeah the gym mean like all that sweat and and how overpopulated you know what it's like you've been in commercial yeah 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 how overpopulated the gyms on a daily basis it's not, it's not even that like even not so commercial gyms like you're sweating on a piece of equipment exactly. like unless you're cleaning that equipment thoroughly like it's a real real bad bad just environment to yeah exactly and like, like you said unless you're cleaning that equipment down thoroughly and i mean like getting on your hands and knees with the toothbrush yeah, you're just uh, leaving leaving it up to chance whether you get it or not and you're kind of just saying well I hope I don't, and I've kind of cleaned it, but I don't know, because you, you won't know. So at the end of the day, I, I just think that this thing is going to be more long-term than people are making out to be. Three weeks is three weeks, but I, I'd be There's I'd no be chance. very surprised if if it lasted less than two months. I'd be yeah, very yeah, surprised. me too, me too. Um, but to answer your question, I think that, like I said, knowledge knowledge is power. If you can't afford to invest into a really good coach that knows what they're talking about and, and, it can, and that can not only... Uh, give you things to do but also those things that they've given you to do you can actually learn from um so it's all good me telling somebody to go for three reps of a cyclist squat for you know on the hour every hour but if i'm not telling that person why that works and why they need to do that instead of go for a jog for example yeah, or, yeah. or why this is better or worse for them then i think that um you're not wasting your money, but I just think that it's very short lived. Like you're kind of you're kind of just sweeping your problems under the rug a little bit. So so maybe a bit of advice if I was to interpret some of that would be, you know, find a coach that you think's delivering good information, somebody that has a good track record, somebody yeah. that you think, you know, I've seen they're getting results for that person. I know a friend that's personal trained with them and and see what they're putting out and and try and digest some of the information because all coaches put out this is the thing somebody said to me actually says dan you're putting out so much content you're hustling at the moment i was like you don't see what i provide for my clients yeah i know i was like honestly i was like like if you like i was like you get a touch like the information that like don't get me wrong i give like like information out to the general public but again it's based general like it's not directed and this is where like i think investing the coach would come in but um 
So you, your advice would be follow someone that you think is knowledgeable and digest some of their information. Yeah, I, I, I think I think you know best case scenario you 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 invest in a great coach that's going to invest into you. Best case scenario, yeah. if financially and you know in terms of time, you know a lot of kids are off school at the minute, so I totally understand if you haven't got the means to be able to do that, then you know what? Secondary to that, you invest in the same coach, but ask him for a consultation. Like I've had people message me and say, you know, how much are your packages for this many sessions a week or that many, or, you know, what, what exactly yeah, do you yeah, want? Yeah. And they've gone down that list and they think, you know, I can't afford that, can't afford that, can't afford that. And I said, listen, book in a consultation. It's going to cost you this much, right? It's a fraction of the price for a coaching for a month, but you get me for an hour and it, and I tell you what, if you ask the right questions or if you tell me at least what you'd like to know, I'll sit there for an hour and I'll literally tell you exactly what you need to hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I, I I think I think there's power uh, in that. People, so there's yeah. power in that. It's like I I had a brilliant podcast the other day, and he said something, and he said, you know, I released a 10 minute video. Uh, he said I released a 10 minute video all about fat loss and um, like how fat loss actually occurs in the body. Um, and so he said he got some rude comment on it, and um, he, he he then said, you know, I've been doing this thing for 15 years and I've digested that information into 10 minutes. So that hour consultation you've had, you know what I mean? That hour consultation is so powerful. That's everything that you've learned, everything that you've mm. experienced and you're giving them in that hour and specific to them, specific yeah. to them. That's, that's the thing about a coach is specific to the client. Yeah. I did, it is. There's that example. I he always use this, this, this example. I think it was Picasso. And there's like this famous story that, that uh, he was, he was in, he was in a cafe in Paris one, one morning and he was just like drinking his coffee. And there was some woman and a kid watching him just like doodling on some napkin. And he was doodling on this napkin for about 10, 15 minutes, just as he was drinking his coffee. He gets up, takes a napkin, walks out, screws the napkin up and throws it in the bin. And this woman like runs after me. She's like, "Oh no, no, no! Can I, can I, can I please like have the napkin?" And she's like, "Like, I, I, I buy it. Like, what? Like, I'll even like pay for it. I'll even pay for the napkin, like, because I want it that much." Yeah, yeah. And he's like, "He's like, yeah, okay, twenty thousand pounds, or or whatever the currency is in yeah, uh, sure. euros or whatever, right?" And and uh, and she's like, "What?" And she thinks that he's joking. He's like, "Yeah." And she's like, "But that, it took you like fifteen minutes." And he's like, "No." That took me my whole life to be able yeah. to talk like that. What you saw was 20 minutes worth of the finished product, but it's taken me my whole life to be able to be that good to draw that in 20 minutes, yeah, which yeah. is why he charged that money. So I think that, you know, in one sense, you know, I applaud coaches for, for, for doing what they do. But in another sense, I think the clients have to understand that when they look at the value of what trainers or coaches or online coaches charge, don't look at the value per hour. Like I always, I, I never, I never charge per hour. I charge. I say that, I say that every, every time I have a consultation, I say that one line and it's, yeah. you know, I say, cause they'll say, oh, it's, it's a uh, 40 pound an hour or whatever. And I'll be like, you know, um, I say, you just don't turn up for the hour. You mean every session you have is programmed. You yeah. go away and you follow that program. Um, it's not even that like that program took me two hours to make before you yeah. step foot into the gym you know <laughs> yeah. what I mean yeah. so then you step foot in the gym and then um, I'm taking care of your nutrition outside of the gym you know what I mean I'm checking up on you seeing if you're doing sessions like there's just yeah. so That's much it. within that hour I was like I was like but, but this is the thing and this is what I was actually going to say so one of the things I want to talk about what think you think makes a good coach and one of the things that I've spotted from this corona is the coaches that are struggling most are the coaches that are there and only they're motivating them. Because if you're if you're a coach and someone shows up for a session and your end goal is, because all goals really, most clients want to come in and they want to work out. But if your goal as a coach is just to smash that client through training with no education, no programming, nothing going on outside of the gym, then like you're not giving them enough value. And they're the clients that are struggling because once you've taken the gym away and you've taken that one-to-one -one contact, the client's got nothing. It's like, oh, well, he's yeah. not there to motivate me. Um, oh, I, I mean, he's never made me a program. Like, just, yeah. and they're the clients that really, the PTs that are really struggling in this. Yeah, I, 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 I know a lot of coaches that, like, don't program for their clients. They kind of just blag it on the day. Which is just horrendous. Uh, just, <laughs> yeah. It's a shambles, yeah. that is, you know. It's a like, shambles. It's, you know, it's, it's it daylight robbery. Sick. <laughs> it's, yeah, honestly, it makes me sick. It's daylight robbery. I can't believe 
that there are still people that are that have the audacity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I can't believe that they've got the audacity to still, you know, charge people what they charge, which is a lot of money in some cases. If you go down to places like David Lloyd or if you go to Virgin or whatever yeah. without a program, like you know, it's not good enough just to be in decent shape and expect somebody to trust you because you're in decent it's, shape. That's the problem. That's it's, the problem. It's, and 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 you know what? It's just again, knowledge is power. It's it's a lack of knowledge and 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 naivety from the general public because what happens is that they see they obviously you know the first impression is always visual so yeah, they'll walk yeah. you walk into the gym and you'll see somebody and you'll be like hmm they're they're in shape they're in the kind of shape that i he want must, to be in so yeah i'll go with them yeah he must know what he's talking about well actually in that matter of fact that person's got crazily good genetics they probably um eat like like a monster uh they, like you know they just happen to like their macros that they're eating and it yeah, just can't yeah, yeah. They just, you know what I mean? they've just got lucky they've just got really good genetics it's and they so, train hard i'm so glad you've said that this is the thing where i say it is some people don't know how they got in good shape they actually yeah. don't know the recipe like, <laughs> like yeah just, seriously because i like in my head i have a rough like i could literally pattern out a rough recipe for everybody it yeah. would get 100 percent individualized but the recipe is for most people, you know what I mean? I want them, I want to see strength increasing across certain movements. Uh, and if it's fat loss is the goal and I want to see body fat trend down, like that recipe is so basic in, in of itself. And so yeah. it goes into it, but like most people don't even know their own recipe. Like they just, no, no. people that are in shape are just like, they think they're in shape because they're in shape. Like it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Like I, 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 I get, I get the whole, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? There's some people that are in shape and they've got no idea how they've gotten in shape and they don't want to come out of shape, so they just carry on how they're doing. They just go yeah, to the gym yeah, yeah. every day or every other day and they do the same exercises, the same exercises with the same weight. There's no progressive overload in any way, shape, or form. There's not even like a variation of tempo. They yeah, do the yeah. same exercise, the same machines, the same time of day. It's like, I, I'm, it actually impresses me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it impresses me some people imp actually impress me with how consistent they are even though it's monotonous like they come in the gym do the same workout every single day every single week for god knows how many months or years in some cases i'm not i'm not even exaggerating years in some yeah, cases no, yeah, like it's that crazy. i think of now and they get their results a lot they, of the time. They, yeah, yeah do you know what i mean do you know what I mean? like you know you get one out of ten people that are very lucky like my mum's lucky She's got very good genetics, right? She works. Um, she works in a job where she can she stays active every day. She's literally working in the gym pretty much every day, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so she she's every day she pretty much just just just, just trains. And you know she's fifty seven now, right? And for the first God knows how many years of that job, she was absolute. She's in ridiculous shape. Like you know the woman's fifty years old and she's got a four pack still oh, after having two kids. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Strong as hell supple like lean eating what she wants doing what she wants whatever and i said to her mom like this stuff's going to catch up with you if you don't learn about your own body and if you don't learn how to kind of um, um well prevention's better than the cure isn't it in terms of injury and you know health and stress yeah, and sure. whatever so i said mom you need to start thinking about later on in life because there are things that happen to your body that you might not be able to see that don't come across in the form of abs or in the form of muscles or or leanness or health or whatever yeah, it comes yeah. across like it's happening like on a cellular level and it's building up very very slowly over time uh she doesn't want to she didn't want to hear it now fast forward like four or five years later since i've told her that she's got little to no rotator cuff left in either in either in either shoulder she's got i think like maybe two discs absolutely obliterated in her spine oh, like oh. Do you know what I, mean? I mean listen she's still working she's still going to yeah, work sure, she's sure train every day but the point is is that if she would have just listened to you know mom maybe before a session maybe you do some dynamic stretching and then after finish with some some dynamic and some static stretching and then maybe maybe just limit the amount of sugar that you eat in a day maybe yeah, like yeah. try and get more than four hours sleep a night even if she would have just done those simple things which for most people are like they don't even have to think about that yeah, anyway yeah, yeah, yeah. been in a much different position now but you know, it's one of those things. Like, if, if it's working, she's like, well, I'm, I'm fit, I'm, I'm fine. My mom said that. It comes down to that whole ignorance thing. That's a different generation, I think. You know, they can. My mom and your mom, they're part of that generation where it's like, 
oh, go on, I'll be all right. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. That, 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 that kind I, of hero, I, hero I generation. Do, do some resistance training, and, like, a oh, hundred times. <laughs> yeah. And most recently when I met her, I says, I says, mum, and she goes, Dan, I don't want to hear it because I know what you're going to say. I said, Mom, just, just, if you know what I'm going to say, just listen to me. And then I was just like, you know, as you get older, everybody slows down. You know what I mean? The fast twitch, they stop working. Yeah. And if you've not got the strength there, like, it's going to get very hard for you to get round. I was like, just, I was like, I kept it really simple. I was like, can you just do, like, I was basically just trying to teach her into doing a, a squat. I can't remember. I listened, but what squat was the number one one because I was like, I mean, as you know, like they say that, squat is one of the fundamental exercises that increases yeah. uh, life expectancy yeah for anyone that doesn't know th- one of the reasons that is it's not so as complicated as you think but as we get older uh, we slow down and if going to the toilet was a, a one rep max for you if you, you're struggling to get up and down stairs and, and going to the toilet's a one rep max then what's your chances of nipping to the shops to get groceries or things like that that keep el- elder people a lot fitter so yeah but yeah i was just trying to teach her into one of those things and um it's just not having it whatsoever and she's yeah. still having it and i'm just like if she gets older um but she is fit don't get me wrong she's fit and she has no complaints and like but like like you say it will catch up with her and this is it so she's yeah now so it'll catch up. <laughs> i don't know man i think that generation's uh it, it, it's it's going to take it's going to take a lot for anybody of that generation to to kind of realize um how important it is to have an open mind when it comes to health and nutrition and it's not even they're not even crazy changes do you know what i mean your mom with you know how old she is and with 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 the stage of life that she's at she all she would have to do is like train twice a week yeah do you know what i mean just train train twice a week two days i've considered i've considered paying a personal trainer for her like i've considered because i was like it won't it won't work me and your mom it won't work (laughs) i was like if you you know if, if you just I mean, I'll pay a personal trainer that I think's good. Just go yeah. there, do half an hour session twice a week, and yeah. like, I'll leave you alone. Like we're gonna have to talk, but leave you alone. <laughs> uh, but she's no, not having it, so no, that's what it no. is. So, so back to Corona. Yeah, I know probably people are sick of hearing it, but um, is there? A, let's take diet now, right? Yeah. Is there some core advice? Is there anything measures that you've taken as a general rule? Uh, let's just keep it general for now. If there's any measures that you've taken as a general rule of clients, because there's a couple of things that I've done. One of them's for most of my clients, I've reduced total calorie intake because yeah. a lot of them will be do- moving that little bit less. Whilst the workouts will remain intense, I want to get onto workouts before you go, so don't don't let us leave without that conversation. Um, the, while the workouts remain intense, a lot of the time they're sat down, not doing much. So. Yeah. I, not all of the clients, but on a lot of my clients, I've reduced total calorie intake. Yeah. Uh, for some of them, I've, I've made sure they increase the protein intake, uh, whilst calories are reduced anyway. Um, is there any measures that you think are appropriate for clients that you've taken or anything that you just think is a general rule for people should be applying? Yeah. So I think for the most part, like you said, just reduce the calorie intake slightly. Um, if somebody's, Not a lot. Not a lot no, but... no, no. It doesn't have to be like a ridiculous amount. Like, you know. For, for most people, right, you take a typical guy or take, 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 take a typical girl and she gets up in the morning, she makes a breakfast, she goes, she, she walks to the car or she walks to the bus or she walk, maybe walks to work in total, gets to work, sits down for like, you know, best part of a day, maybe walks to get some lunch, maybe walks around the office for a bit and then walks to a car, the tram, the bus, whatever it is to get home and then maybe goes to the gym, right? With being in lockdown, I think that people aren't going to be doing, um, people are going to be obviously less active, but I don't think it's as as drastic as people are, are, are thinking. I think people's exposure to vitamin, D, to the sunlight, you know, their vitamin D levels might be dropped dramatically, especially if they're just sitting in, like I'm looking out on my street now. A lot of the blinds are closed, the windows are closed. You need some ventilation. You need to get some fresh air. You need to get some sunlight for sure. That will keep you yeah, healthy. Yeah. But I think that in terms of like their their activity level across the day from non from NEPA non exercise physical activity, I don't think it's going to be reduced ridiculously. Which is why I think the calorie reduction should kind of mimic that. Like you said, it doesn't have to be like going from three well, three thousand a day to like one thousand five hundred. Yeah, you can put it like that. 
But this is interesting as well because one of my clients, I, I, I'm not, I haven't done yet. We've kept his calories the same. I'm monitoring, but the potential is I might actually increase his calories because he's got three mm. kids and at work he's <clears> keeping <throat> him more busy than ever. And yeah. it's interesting uh, you saying people have more time than ever. Well, I actually, I mean, I'm sure you probably do agree. I just think I'm, I, I've caught you out of context, but some of my clients have got less time because there's so much. They've got to manage everything at home. Like, right. like some of my clients are like, you know what I mean? Uh, um, one of the like one of my clients I really want, was keen on doing virtual sessions with, and he, he and he said, Dan, I'd actually prefer online coaching because. I just can't give you a strict time each day with the kids. They're keeping me so busy. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? If you can set me away with program and I'll just check in every day. And Well, <clears throat> and one, 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 of my, one of my clients, um, she's, she's a single mom with five kids who, for a full-time job, is a babysitter. Okay? Mad. So, so, yeah. She's moving. So, yeah, she is honestly like massive. That's, a, that's to cardio her. all day. That, that is like that's some steady state cardio. Yo, all day. You know what I, mean? I said to you, you only need to train twice a week and you're good. Yeah, uh, yeah. But no, so so she, when she's, you know, um, uh, prior to lockdown, she's waking up in the morning, getting getting her kids ready, taking them to school. You know, in the daytime, she kind of preps the house and whatever. And then it's at more after school in the evening is where her, the bulk of her work is now. Yeah, yeah. However, now that she's in lockdown, the kids aren't at school. She's now got five kids, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, as opposed to having five kids, getting them up and out in the morning, letting them be at school. And then, I don't know, maybe like seven kids in the evening. So her, her, for, for, her, for example, she's actually probably doing like a very similar amount. When you take into consideration the gym and what she would yeah, do yeah, sure. you know, day to day normally. She's probably like, you know, the same, she's probably as active, like over the course of the whole day with five kids, 24 hours a day, over the course of the whole day with five kids in the morning, the evening. Yeah, with and it's probably kids. her own kids, I'll listen less, so it'll probably be more stressful. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like it's, it's uh, yeah, no, exactly. So, so with her, for example, like we reduced the calories, I think it was by like, something ridiculous like 100 130 calories or something like that today so not much you know what i mean like it's like another another few bites of like a uh, or even a meal or whatever so mm -hmm. it's not a ridiculous amount um but also just on the same topic there are one or two girls that have got at the minute who are struggling to lose weight even though they're in a huge deficit um and we've kind of crept up on that deficit over time and it's increasing, it's increasing. And we've tried to stop back. They lost a stop. And then, yeah, exactly. Start to plateau. Yeah. And then one of the things that they're finding now is that they're struggling with their appetite, you know, things like um, uh, irregular periods. And you know, like, it's just, it's just, you know, telltale signs. Lance, of like, before you continue, yeah. uh, one of the things I, I, I notice on your side, just turn that back on. One thing that I notice. I'm not interrupting. I want you to continue this conversation. But uh, one of the things I really noticed, and it comes across with you, and this is why I, I was keen on getting you on the show, was that I feel that um, the community and the love you have for your clients mm -hmm. is felt. And that past last comment is what I notice as a good coach, the level of service in terms of you're asking personal questions. You're asking what's your energy been like? What's your hunger been like? What's your yeah. stress been like? Like I monitor these things on a scale of one to 10. And I notice that uh, with, uh, it's something that you do is a big measure with all your clients. Like I, I think that it, it makes you stand out. And especially with your women coaching, uh, with your ladies, it makes you, it separates you from a lot of personal trainers, the community you have. So yeah, well, I, I, yeah, first of all, I mean, I, I appreciate that because it means a lot coming from a, a, a good coach and somebody who like, you know, you've not really, we've not really been around each other a lot uh, recently because of this whole Corona, yeah, thing. Yeah, sure. um, but it, but it's nice that it like, it still comes across through social media and you know, whatever. But in terms of like the community, I think that's one thing just to kind of like link that back into the whole Corona thing. That's one thing that has kind of really been um what's the word i'm looking for it's just it's just been like a godsend man like having a group of girls who yes they're clients first and yes it's a service and yes they're paying for something and yes i'm going to deliver that professionally but it's been a godsend having people you know training with me that i also really enjoy talking to and i really enjoy being around i made a rule for myself yeah. a couple of years ago that i was never going to take on a client that I didn't get 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 on with, and I don't mean we don't have to like you know have, like the same. Yeah, movie. yeah, yeah, sure. Like, 
yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? That, you that's like certain things, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 for sure. Like, do you know what I mean? We don't have to like both vote for the two. You know, some of my clients voted leave, some of my clients voted <laughs> yeah. stay. Yeah, yeah. You know I mean? We don't have to get on in that sense. But having clients that day to day you can get on with, and you and over over time you start to develop a relationship with them. Um, and I think that <clears throat> with this whole Corona thing, like it's really, it's really been a godsend because some people, you know, unfortunately for some of my clients, they're self isolated or they're locked down by themselves. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And, and they've kind of not got anybody to talk to, or they've locked, or, or they've kept them in a, in a, yeah, in a people. Yeah, do you know what I mean? And they're like, they're saying to me, like, geez, like, Lance, I don't know what I'd do if it wasn't for X, Y, Z person. And it's not necessarily me, but it's like some of my clients, and I see them, they're sharing things to see, each I other. Love this. Yeah. And Instagram, like that. Like, it's just, like, it, it just really, I'm, I'm proud of it because I know it kind of stems from things that I put in place, but I'm really more, more, I'm just in awe of what the girls have done amongst themselves. Like, you know, I think, I don't know, it was probably about a couple of months ago now, one morning was training and the girls were talking about going to like some bar by themselves. And I, I looked, look, what? And there was like three of them talking about it. And I was like, and they was like, yeah, and you're not invited. Like, and I was like, <laughs> I was laughing like it was just cute, man. I just like my heart. That, I mean, that yeah, it comes across. So I think you should be really happy as a personal trainer from there. Like you know, what I mean, from as a as another coach, I see that, and uh, you should be really happy about that. So right, just because we're running, we're getting close to your time. So, yeah. um, I want one thing I want to talk on is how how people can adapt their training quickly. Because um, I, I put out a piece of content a couple of days ago, um, and I was just saying that. A lot, in my opinion, um, a lot of the principles shouldn't change. And the upsetting thing is, is and it, you touched on it yesterday as well, that a lot of personal trainers are talking about this time we should be used to maintain, and which I think is ridiculous. What are you paying a coach for? <laughs> I know. A coach for if I they know. say to you, yeah, we're just going to use this time. We're going to use, it could be six months. Imagine that. You know, <laughs> you use this next thing. six months to maintain. You know, what I mean, you're going to pay me a wage to maintain that. Like that made me feel sick. You're so, going to pay. You're going to pay me to keep you exactly how you are when you. Yeah, came. yeah. You know what I mean, what, what, no, what, no. your exact job is to help change people. That's your job. Yeah. Bob. Like <laughs> whether it's whether it's mentally, physically, whatever. Like mm. your your job is to change people on some level. Yeah. Uh, if you're telling them this is to maintain, oh, that makes me. Yeah, fun. no, it's it's ridiculous. It's just a cop out. Yeah, it's just a cop out. So, what principles would you apply? And what things, you know, whether it's certain things that you can adapt through training? Because say that you know, really somebody has a kettlebell, they have a resistance band, but they've not got a lot of equipment. So, how would yeah. you adapt things, and what what measures could they take to improve the training? Uh, I mean, geez, like, listen, a resistance band and some kettlebells, like, yo, like, I can, I can give you a workout with some resistance bands and some yeah. kettlebells. You know what I mean? I Particularly, you can, yeah. Listen, you can give someone if if we're talking a strict resistance workout or a strength workout, strength protocols can be applied to just body weight. Full yeah. stop. Yeah. Like 100%. full stop. Like, and, ex- and especially as well, this is the thing. If, if personal trainers, most of the clients aren't super super well adapted. Like. Like, you know what I mean? Most of the clients on at the elite level. So no. they don't need to be moving 200 kilos. No, like, they, 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 they can take a whole workout with body weight. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah. They, they, they can really, yeah, exactly. Well, if you think about, I know this is a little bit more in depth than some some of the people that might be listening are kind of used to hear it. But if you think about the progressions from an absolute rank beginner with like a training age of zero yeah. and somebody who's got a training age of like maybe like five to 10 years, and that person, obviously, of course, you know, you're gonna have to give them some some sort of like yeah, yeah. barbell complex or kettlebell complex or yeah, sure, sure. Man comes or, or whatever. It's gonna be a lot more intricate up, up, up on this end of the floor. But if you've got like for the average person, their training age is what, like I'd say, maybe a year or two, like yeah, actual yeah. training. Age. And I'm not talking and, about and, when and, you signed and up. This is the thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And this is the thing. Actual like proper. You know what I mean? Training. Yeah, age. yeah, it's yeah. Harder. Exactly. I think, like experience I think, training age is yeah you, exactly yeah. Do you know what I mean like not how long you've been training for how long you've been training correctly for yeah. you know what I mean yeah. which some people might have a training age what they consider to be three years but then you know we assess them taking through like a little run around and we we're like squat. yeah no like your training age is zero we go yeah, from like yeah. from the bottom up you're going to go with some split squats some step ups some planks and push ups yeah, yeah. And basics of the raw yeah 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 exactly just the basics in it which you can get a lot done with right i think that um you can get a lot done so uh, what what i would say is that in in my opinion 
the biggest thing you're going to struggle with now being in lockdown is um getting the accommodating resistance getting get, basically loading up the exercises yeah sure. being able to load certain exercises there's just not that's enough the, weight well, that is that's the biggest struggle one thing i said to one of my clients was keen on getting stronger yeah and one of this is outside of <clears throat> corona and he said to me I, I was training him outside of capital one which is a gym that i train at and um yeah. He said, oh, you know, Dan, one day I want to do the 50 dumbbells. Well, Capital One only got up to 25 dumbbells. And I said to him, there is nothing that you can do with 25 kilos. You could do a 10-second tempo explode up. There's just zero that you could do. You could do 100 reps on 25s. Yeah. You will never get to the 50s. Just, it just won't happen. No. Um, and, and that's the one thing, the load that people are lacking. But there's things like chin-ups. Most people have got the facilities to do chin-ups at home on yeah. some kind of facility or it's not cheap to invest in so like and then if you add load to you then or like, there's just so many things you can still add yeah. load to but like you say i do agree a barbell you know what i mean you can't get someone squ squatting without load like this is yeah, just no. two ways about it yeah i think obviously like it would well so what what i do just just to kind of like explain what what yeah. what i what i'm like my point what I tend heads up, to, yeah. yeah, it's twenty to twelve. So oh yeah, 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 yeah. No worries. Like if I if I make sure that I'm going to like five two, then then all then right, should... cool. we're good. Right. Um, yeah. So what 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 I would say right is that like with the boot camp, what I usually do right is I have um, is I have like a load of different groups of exercises. So we have you know a vertical push, a vertical pull. Horizontal push, horizontal pull, yeah, yeah. Knee, knee dominant, hip dominant, abs and core, and then something kind of like more metabolic, more like, you know, kind of like a hit kind of exercise, right? Yeah, sure. And we have all these different all these different groups worth of exercise. And under each one, I write the, the, the absolute best. So underneath a vertical pull, pull up, yeah? Underneath that, the yeah. second best, probably a chin up. Underneath that, underneath that, underneath that, you know, um, in terms of uh, knee, knee dominant, you got a front squat, or an overhead squat, uh, yeah. and then you've got something like uh, a back squat, maybe a split squat, or whatever, whatever, whatever. And and I do it in terms of how 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 tough they are physically, um, also like structurally how tough they are. You know how many people can get into that front rack position? Not, Not many. many. Yeah. So that's why front squat is probably higher up. Also, you can lift less and whatever, whatever, whatever. So that's the kind of setup I have for the boot camp, right? Now, if I take that setup. And, and and what I do is every single person who comes to me for a consult, because there's usually 12, 10 to 12 girls in the boot camp. So let's say somebody comes into me and I have an assessment with her. What I do after that assessment is, okay, okay. So let's say it's, um, I don't know, Laura. Laura can't do this, 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 this. So we scribble those, all those exercises out from the top, from the top down. And then let's say um, Ella comes in and she can do this, this 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 i'll keep the one scribbled out scribbled out and if ella can do these 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 and these then that means that i've then got a list of exercises that laura and ella can both do safely yeah sure sure and then obviously as as the boot camp as it goes on I go it gets more particular yeah exactly and then, and then what i'm left with is like a list of all these different exercises that i can do that every single one of the girls can do and then we start with the best version of 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 the of the entire workout for each each um uh for, for each boot camp basically yeah and then as, as the weeks go on you kind of get more particular and they go ella actually you know what you are doing goblet squats but you actually have a really good front rack position you've got enough mobility yeah, to do yeah, that we can see so you go with the front, yeah so you still go with the front squat right and we kind of take it to one side and do that i think adopting that kind of same mentality with this lockdown is a good idea so you kind of have all the exercises that you'd like to be able to do from the from absolute best of the best to, you know, something like, you know, from like an overhead squat to something like a, I don't know, a, um, a hamstring curl with a towel on the floor, right? right. Isn't bad, yeah. Which isn't a bad exercise. This isn't a bad exercise. It's, this, ju it's just, it's just is, not, it's like, not a front squat. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. This, yeah. This is a thing, like, you said it spot on. There is so much you can do forget kettlebell with the resistance band like there is so much you can do with the resistance band and i'm on about effective like yeah. a lot of guys as well they're worried about the gains like if it's just strictly gains take strength out the equation yeah, yeah, yeah. heads out is like you know what i mean if you want to bench 140 then there's not much you can do at home without close no. to 140 but 
if your goal is to look good, like you could do that with different types of push-ups, with adding tempos or yeah. adding load where possible. But like, there's so many things. If your goal is just aesthetics, which most people it is, yeah. Like, like the goal shouldn't be just maintain if you're enough. So like, you know what I mean? The things you can do, the resistance band to just get muscle, like just to grow muscle. Like, body sculpting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Body, body, yeah, yeah. Like, no. There's no and issue. That's... And that's where I've shifted my training. That is how I've yeah. shifted my training is, you know, I, I, I pulled away from trying to lift a bit heavier. I've gone, right. There's restrictions on adding load to the bar. Uh, I don't have a squat rack, which I well, actually am investing in, but right now I don't have one. Um, but what I'm trying to do is just think, right, how can I spend 40 minutes to an hour and get the most stimulus within that time? Yeah. The quality. Yeah, no, I think, I think for sure, like, um, like, you know, well, yeah, exactly. Basically, like we were saying, you're going to struggle with load, but aside from that, you can make it work. If like we were saying before, you've got the knowledge on how yeah. to, um, I think you've but it got also takes discipline as well. Um, yeah, yeah, I think yeah, that yeah. working out from home takes a lot more discipline because, like, and the whole this is a thing that another principle that I would apply is the whole my muscle connection and where mm. if if you think like a cue that you ask as a personal trainer, where are you feeling that? Like, and and if they don't feel it in the right area, why not? Like, you've got yeah. to assess why not. And yeah. but client people that are training from home can take that advice and go, you know, I'm trying to work my back. And like I'm using a resistance band, I can't. I, no matter what I do, I can't get this resistance band to really give me the tension that I want. But let's just go slower and let's really, really, really feel it in the back. Yeah, let's concentrate yeah. on where I'm working. Let's really retract. Uh, let's slow the tempo down. And that's where like I've noticed from training at home, my muscle connection is more than like it's ever been. Like you've really got to focus harder to make the less perfect exercise be effective. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. I think, <clears throat> like, 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 like you were saying, um, you've just got to play around with the variables now. You've not got a lot of load to play okay, around so, with. So, what are the variables? So, I, so I'd say, obviously, load is yeah. one of the biggest ones that you can play around with. Like, change, yeah. change the actual weight that you're using. Yeah. Obviously, given it's a home workout, most people aren't going to be able to change change the load if have, if if have any load at all. So. Secondary to that, I'd say change the exercise variation. You can easily change a bicep curl um, with, a, you know, I can give you a fucking tin of beans, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you put me, if you put you on the right angle, give them the right grip, that tin of beans feels like a 40 kg dumbbell. Yeah. Come, <laughs> come, come rep 12. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah. If, if, you, if you also take into consideration changing tempo down, accentuated isometrics is something that I'm really kind of playing around with now. Yeah. So, you know, um, on a push-up on a push-up let's say uh i mean for, for most people for most women especially they struggle to do you know full five re regular full push-ups right I so do. you know we go from being on the box on their knees to being on the box on their feet doing an eccentric push-up so they're just coming down just with their arms plant the knees on the floor and then just kind of reset yeah, sure. um, to then doing things like instead of going to a full push-up or like having some dumbbells or whatever they don't have access to those okay so what we do we go with a full push-up 30 second eccentric okay and we have and, and then we go from that to a 10 second eccentric with three pauses at different points in the movement i tell you what i did i so i did a, i did a push-up series of the day okay and it's and it's oh, 10 push-ups it's it's 10 push-ups three seconds on the way down three seconds on the way up you go from that to a 10 second hold at the bottom and then straight into 10 quick push-ups bro i i tell you what i got to like eight on that last one and i was starting to snake it up it looked like i was trying to do see, the work you see know what I mean? one of the things i mentioned on this recent video that i did that um uh, for a long time, the general rule, and, and, and I think it's good to have it as a general knowledge but for, for people, but the, the general knowledge is sort of like it's anywhere between sort of six to 15 reps is kind of really hypertrophy. Then people nail it down more towards your eight to 12 reps. Yeah. Whereas working at home, I would ex just that theory almost I would exclude and think like, because for some people, I've this one reason I've said to my clients, especially a lot of the guys, I've said, the, the main thing they should be focused on, if I was to say rule number one, is RPE. Uh, for anyone that doesn't know, RPE means rate of perceived exertion. Basically, on a scale of one to 10, how hard do you think you're working? <laughs> yeah. Um, but, and how like you can apply it with that is, 
that for some guys they can do a hundred push-ups and it's not that much of a struggle. So, oh God, so there we are. So, so some guys they can do a hundred push-ups and it's not that much of a struggle. But if they were to then apply <clears throat> a slow tempo and, and like like you say, if they did a five-second eccentric, hold for the, at the bottom for a second, come back up, and like fifty seconds later they're going to be in bits. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, exactly. And, and, and like so then then it would be more like the RPE. So if you can do if you if you get to 10 and it's easy, don't stop at 10 because that's what you've always done. Go right, right to 20 when it gets tough and it, you're, you're at the appropriate RPE. So what would you recommend for RPE? Where I'm at is between, anywhere between seven and nine for most of your sets. And then particularly homework, I recommend taking it to near that 10 RPE. Yeah, I've, I mean, to be honest, it, it's, it's, it's a difficult question to ask, I think, because every exercise and every movement is going to be different for everybody and it's also going to in terms of the variation as well so like for example one of the home workouts that i've that i was programming yesterday had um it, it, and its first exercise is a knee dominant knee dominant day right yeah sure um and its first exercise was a nordic hamstring curl yeah, yeah. so it's one where the partner's sitting on the back of the feet and you're kind of lowering your body, using your hamstrings all the way down to the floor and then yeah. push back up and then coming back up, right? It had a five-second eccentric, and I only, gave the, I only gave them eight reps of that. But then I told them to go straight from that, straight into a rear foot elevated split squat for 12 to 15 reps because I know what that feels like. And I know yeah, if you do yeah. that at the right tempo, and that's going to burn the fuck out of you, the front and back of your legs, right? Your quads and your hammies are going to be absolutely yeah. screwed. But if you look at the total time of detention that I gave them for the eight reps of the Nordic hamstring curl and the 12 to 15 reps of the two second on the way down, one second on the way up, constant tension, um, rear foot elevated split squat. It was literally, I think it was like 10 seconds apart. So yeah, yeah. Do, do, do you know what I mean? So although that's eight reps and the other one was a combined 24, if you look at each side, yeah, uh, sure. or, or, or even 30, if they went up to 15, like it was ridiculous. Like, and that both those things are body weight. Both the, I tell you what, you do some Nordic hamstring curls and some rear foot elevated anything, you will feel it the next day. I know, I mean, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I think just just to kind of clarify where I stand on that, I think the variables that I, I tend to play around with is um, tempo. Um, is I play around with rest times. You know, you can shorten your rest time to a little yeah, to nothing, sure. and 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 really, you know, get a sweat on or you know feel the burn in a particular area of your body. It depends what you're trying to achieve by the workout. You know what I mean? If it's just yeah, like, yeah. if it's a conditioning day, yo, get through it. Don't put yeah, like you, know, yeah, you put you put time on at the start. You put time on when you finish, and you and you rest and you rest for as little time as possible if it's conditioning. But if your if your goal is trying to get that you know that hypertrophic adaption in the muscle, then you know you need some kind of rest time to be able to recover enough to do another eight reps of the normal. Yeah, time. yeah. So the, so the volume's quality. I I, I have the yeah. class volume. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of guys. Having said that, a lot of the workouts at home will lead to what people think is trash volume but like where you said it is like you need enough rest so each set is good quality so that yeah. you're actually getting to decent reps towards the end because it all that happens is you if you're constantly fatigued you don't know how you, you a you can't track progression number one you know yeah. I mean, you're not going to get stronger or more effective in that exercise because you're just constantly fatigued during it and that's a big forget corona and working from out from home I think that's a big problem I see guys in the gym. They run around the gym doing 100 yeah. exercises and everything. Don't, yeah, there's no, quali there's no quality. Yeah. Uh, right, so yeah. So just to round this up, Lance, if you was just to round up, a, a few take-home messages for people to think of. What is there any take-home messages that you'd give to people? Um, I mean, if they weren't to... We know that I'm, I'm the same. I feel quite passionate about hire a coach, hire someone that's going to... Uh, give you the knowledge and gain that knowledge but but if there was anything else another take-home message what would it be i think that the as well i think that like you've kind of like hit the nail on the head really like the first thing is knowledge is power yeah and sure. i think that in whatever way shape or form you've got to do it you have to start to learn how to train you have yeah, to sure. learn how to train. So whether it's investing in a coach to train you, investing in a coach to teach you, which is the two are totally different. Yeah, you can, yeah, yeah. You can, you know, you can sign up for a month with a coach online, or you can sign up for a um, uh, just 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 a single consultation with somebody who really knows their shit. Um, or potentially, listen, like there's so many so many articles online. I follow so many people, different people on social media, so many different like uh, companies that are really really good 
at you know strength and conditioning and like getting people in shape and they have like a ton of archives available on their websites for free that so okay, do you think might... some people aren't hungry enough to learn do you think um some people are, yeah of course there's always going to be one or two people who are just yeah, like sure. it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what you give them they're just going to be like mm, no just bone idle but yeah. i think that for the most part it's that people are ignorant to it people just don't know do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, if you yeah. if you th- if you was an average person, Dan, if you didn't know anything about the gym and you thought I want to get in shape, what do I need to do? I need to hire a personal trainer. Yeah. How- yeah. However, but that's the given- best place to be if they think that. Yeah. I, yeah, I, yeah, I, I yeah, love yeah. that. That's almost the best clients come is that they, they come just unwilling, like they, they almost go, "Do whatever, Dan. Whatever you whatever you need, I'll do it." That's just the best. I think, but 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 the problem is, it's like you know. I think that's all well and good with me, you, me and you saying that, and that is the ideal scenario. But what you tend to get is people that, for example, if we look at a different, if we look at it through like a different avenue, you get people that have a toothache, go to the, dent- the dentist and tell the dentist what what they want. Yeah. Whereas <laughs> what what should happen is you get toothache, you go to the dentist and you say, please help me. Here's here's, here's my money. This is what and th- th- this is where it's hurting can you help me? Can you just solve that problem for me? Yeah. Um, and it's great when you get people that are that open-minded and that like willing to learn and who haven't kind of been like corrupted by mar- false marketing and false advertising and six week booty guides online on Instagram yeah, or whatever. Sure, like, sure. But the, the reality of the situation is now is that these days we live in a media heavy world with Instagram and Facebook. It's an influence. At, it's yeah. It's, you know, it's just an influence. So I think that, if I was to give anybody some take home advice, it would be absolutely invest in knowledge for yourself and, you know, just take it slow. There's no, there's no rush. Take yeah. it slow. Don't invest in something because you've saw like three ninety nine on the price tag yeah, take yeah, it slow yeah. and, 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 and actually like, you know, get a good investment into whatever it is. Okay, cool. So just to round that up, um, I'm sure Lance will agree. We'll be doing something like this again. Me and Lance will get together again. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of untouched stuff in there. And there's a lot of stuff we can talk about again. Um, but yeah, really, thanks for watching. Thanks, Lance, for coming onto the show. No worries. Um, and check out Lance's stuff. And Lance, just before we go, is there anything that you're working on that people can find? Or is there any way we can find you? Uh, yeah, so at the minute, obviously, I've, I've literally today, well, as of last night, just launched my uh, at, uh, at-home workout guide. So people who are kind of stuck with little to no equipment, um, that really want to kind of get some real working out done and don't just want to maintain, yeah, but actually yeah. want to carry on working out and progressing towards their goals. They can find that on my uh, on my Instagram, on my Facebook. It's Lance Cresswell Personal Training. Literally That's just cool. said that the uh, the advert's been on the whole yeah. time. I will um I will link all of Lance's stuff at the bottom. So anything that if you if you like the look of Lance, or I don't know about the look of him, but <laughs> uh, um, if you like the look of Lance. <laughs> <laughs> if, that really says, if you're interested in stuff i will link that at the bottom is there anything else you've got planned up lined up uh so not at the minute i'm, I'm still um and on about whether or not to do the boot camp virtually or not but if and when i do do decide on that i'm doing that or wait until we you know come out of lockdown whenever that yeah, might sure. be um then obviously i'll let you 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 guys know and obviously you can like share that to your followers and stuff yeah, like sure. that but okay. minute, it's just a home workout at the minute Okay, bro. All right. Thanks for having me, for having us, Lance. And uh, until next time, guys, take care. See ya. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.